Hey guys, I uh, wanted to talk about lessons in military leadership, and I'm excited to talk about this. I really think it's going to be helpful, so if you know any guys going in the military or you're in the military, share this with other people. I put a lot of thought into it, so much so I've even got notes preparing. Usually I do these pretty extemporaneously, I just kind of go for it, but now I don't want to miss anything. So uh, really the idea is I want to challenge some of the uh, initial presuppositions of the conventional army drill sergeant do push-ups until you drop and usually that's about all people really know so the goal in tackling this whole issue is i want us to be able to build fearless and efficient warriors that work together as a team now uh your context maybe you're not even military you're just kind of interested some of this stuff building a sports team or your law enforcement and building a team as well some of these principles will apply but mine's going to be a little bit more hardcore than yours because i'm not training dudes for a tickle fight now, th this is you're training them to be really good killers. So uh, being able to mentally goad someone up to be able to do that in the team environment when the stakes are very, very high, you can't go about it the political correct, sissified way that the United States, it, it, you know, that pervasive political correctness invading every area. Now it's really, frankly, in the military. And it's very disheartening to me because there needs to be a certain hardening process so soldiers are ready to do great violence against terrible odds. Now, a quick disclaimer, my caveat emptor for all you guys is all I really know is Ranger Battalion. I don't know how the Army works. I don't know the Navy or Coast Guard or whatever else. I know my spe specific Special Operations Unit. That's really all uh, I know. Uh, and uh, I want to kind of reflect on the time when I was just coming about and how I was treated when I initially arrived at Ranger Battalion all the way to the time where I'm a team leader and a squad leader and whatnot. And oh, how I wish I knew some of this then, uh, but I had to go a about it the, uh, a longer way. Experience is a effective teacher, but it's a slow and painful one. So being able to learn from other people's mistakes and their experience is a far better uh, way to go through. I'm really going to break this down into a couple different areas. Two phases, break phase, uh, break them down, rebuild them phase, and then the initiated uh, brother phase. Uh, so the first one I wanted to tackle was the uh, breakdown phase. And I already alluded to the fact that uh, the sissification of the United States pervading into the military as well, where nobody can handle anything and, and just feelings and sensitivity. And I'm a guy of deep feeling. I, I'm, I have certain sensitivities as well. But it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I love people and I'm sensitive to that. And uh, you should be too. But if you stump your toe and you want to cry about it, you need to suck it up, soldier. That's awful. Uh, I, I don't want you to flinch if someone's slowly sawing off your arm. Be tough. So the first phase I wanted to go over was the break them phase. This is where you really get to see what somebody's built with. So as soon as a private would arrive to me in Ranger Battalion, I want to test them. So I'm going to smoke them like they've never been smoked before. Push-ups, flutter kicks, whatever you, whatever pops into my brain at that time, but I want to completely physically annihilate them. Uh, and then when they're basically laying in a pool of their own sweat, I tell them to keep going. Uh, and, and really what I'm trying to test is their mental and emotional toughness. And this isn't a one-time event. I'll observe this over months where you're just constantly uh, crushing and breaking them down. Now, uh, some ponies take longer to break, and the point is to break them down so that I can level the building of whatever they were before, whoever they were as a person. I want to strip down to a solid foundation, build that foundation tougher, and then build on top of it. But the goal isn't to just perpetually haze privates ad infinitum. Rather, it is toward that end goal of making a fearless and more efficient warrior who's going to be part of a collective team. I don't want to stay in the breaking phase, and some folks, some uh, who are selfish and insecure leaders would just haze, 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 because it's a really fun thing to do. And uh, do, am I saying that it's fun to haze privates? Yeah, it's pretty fun to haze privates, especially when you got yours. You're like, all right, I felt the pain, and now it's time you do as well. Uh, but um, some will say that's mean, but it's kind of funny, so it's excusable, right? 
Um, anyway, it, there is a necessary breaking down phase. This isn't just the physical. The physical is the obvious one, uh, but really what's more important than just physical toughness is mental and emotional toughness as well. I'm interested in the entire person. And different people tick different ways. So for instance, I could smoke this private um, and he's okay with it. But then all of a sudden I could look at another, another private beside him, kind of somebody who's uh, he's with and as I'm just smoking privates and younger ranking guys what it does also is it helps cleave them together for survival and that's an important thing as a generation that's behind me coming up will now be cleaved together as brothers and so that's an important part of the process let them endure the suck together uh, but uh, especially if uh, all, all of a sudden uh, you can uh, let's see uh, Joe and John like Joe John was did not have uh, this in order. Uh, why did you fail John and not help him prepare for this? Joe do push-ups. And so John, who was the one who did it wrong, now I'll punish Joe because Joe didn't help John meet the standard. And now I'll have John count push-ups for Joe. And you could imagine if you were getting annihilated, smoked because of something that your buddy did wrong and your buddy's counting repetitions, psychologically that's hard for people to endure. And dudes will just play, no, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm like, no, 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 you, you count them out. It's your buddy that failed you. He should have squared you away and helped you do this. And so I'd have them, uh, have them do that. Uh, also, just uh, doing fun games of attention to detail type stuff. I had one kid who just couldn't, uh, couldn't keep up with stuff, and just those little tiny details. See, in, in war combat scenarios, those little fine details are what ends up costing people lives. So attention to detail is a really, really big deal. I remember I fired one guy because he went out on a mission with us. He was a young private. I'd given him chance after chance. And uh, he went out on a mission with us uh, in Afghanistan, and he was pulling security in a different area all night, just kind of doing what is it. That's what privates are good for in the initial part is uh, when you're in the break phase, I don't care about your feelings, private. I don't care about your opinions. Really, you're, you're there to pull security where I tell you to and carry heavy things with my tab spec fours, or I can use the stuff that you've gotten, but you're not really a great contributing part of the team. You're still being built into something that can be useful. Uh, so anyway, I had him just pulling sectors of, you know, uh, pulling security in different sectors of fire. And at the end of the mission, we're uh, kind of downloading our stuff and he tipped his rifle up to put it down and I hear this little clink. And I knew exactly what that was. It meant he forgot to put his firing pin, retaining pin, that's the silly name that uh, the military gives for a certain cotter pin that holds your firing pin in an M4. Uh, and I heard it clink down, which meant he forgot to put in that pin, and that was the last straw. That meant if he had had to engage somebody, he had, didn't have a rifle that was going to work. Uh, and so he risked everyone's life uh, because of that, and that was unacceptable. Uh, before that, of kind of like the, the, the before that, they re he reached that last straw. And by the way, I did so much paperwork on this guy. I still know his full name and his full social security number. I can quote it to you right now. Uh, but um, anyway, I remember uh, just trying to help him learn how to uh, have attention to detail. Uh, he kept losing stuff, so I had him tie his socks to his shoes and his shoes to his, his pants. I had him tie his belt to his pants and then his pants to his shirt. And he had to get real creative, but everything he owned and everything he wore at all times had to be tied down to something else. And he got really good at knots too. Uh, but just fun little games that you can play and uh, uniform change games. You know, you're in garrison back in there, they're wearing BDUs. I'm like, hey, change in class A's. You got uh, a minute and a half <laughs> to go uh, do that or something else like that. And then uh, class A's, let me see that. You got a uh, Two minutes and 15 seconds, go. You know, and uh, what you're doing is basically breaking them down, mentally, emotionally, physically, and it's a good edifying process. Yeah, dudes need this as a part of being able to endure all kinds of mental suck. Uh, one funny story, I remember my very first day at Range Battalion, and I had a whole room full of sergeants and, uh, you know, tab spec force, and they're just kind of like, hey, who's the new guy? Let's see what he's made of. And so the very first day, we packed me for war. And so the military has, like, a special nomenclature for everything. And you're not given, like, a guidebook on what these things are. You just show up, and he's like, all right, LEPS level four go and I have there's this big pile of stuff in front of me now I'm supposed to go through and find my leps level four and I have no idea what this is 
but I know if I don't dive in and find it immediately before the spec fours find it, then I owe them push-ups once the sergeant's done smoking me. And so it was just kind of like a mess. So what do you do? You just dive in the pile and you grab stuff and you're kind of like watching their face to play the hotter colder game. And then you pick something up and you're like, did I get it? And everything's quiet. And then he looks at you and you're like, push-ups, Lavelle. And he never learned my name. He called me Lavelle. My name's Lovell, John Lovell. Uh, but anyway, push-ups, Lavelle. And so I would do this. It was like, all right, next, VS-17 panel. And I'm kind of like, dive back in the pile. You have no idea. You hold up like a camelback. Push-ups, Lavelle. And it's like, oh, awesome. But the games you play and just how frustrating uh, that old process can be. It breaks you down, wears you down mentally and emotionally. And that's really important to be able to break someone down. Seems mean, but it's the best thing you can do because you're trying to build something out. Now, because we are moving into such a time of political correctness and sissification of our armed forces, you can't really do what I'm saying as much, I, I, I don't think. Hopefully you can, at least in soft. Uh, but um, what it'll ultimately do is uh, not allow soldiers to be as hardened as they were in the past. And this will be devastating when we actually fight a foreign enemy that's ready to take us to task. Uh, the second phase is the rebuild phase. This is where we're uh, not trying to, but we've, they've proven that they've got good character, good work ethic, they're strong emotionally, mentally, physically, they're doing everything well, good job. Uh, now it's time to kind of ease up, show them a little mutual respect, and this should be a little bit calmer of a uh, learning environment. This should be punish reward. If they're doing everything right, lay off. I'm not smoking them. I'm not hazing them. And they need to know that you actually are invested in them and you care about them as well. This is really, really important. Now, in, in the initial days with a private of, uh, I want them to be more afraid of me than an enemy. And that's how they'll prevail in combat uh, because they're just what I say is law. And if I say sprint into that wall without question, they'll run and sprint into the wall. That's good. Uh, but they don't, you don't want to stay that way. Now I want to start uh, making somebody who's uh, being groomed to be part of a brotherhood, part of a team with mutual respect and affection because it's my goal that one day that this young private I'm growing up would give his life for me. And if you keep him in that, I'm going to haze you because I hate you stage, he'll hate you too. And then that's not being part of a nice, efficient uh, collective of warriors working together as one. So uh, uh, being able to sh uh, let them know that you have some type of affection in this area. You should be teaching them everything in this says, hey, how to PT, uh, how to fight, uh, how to do marriage in a, a military context with deployments and reintegrations and all that stuff. You should be teaching them how to do rest time and garrison. You should be teaching them finance stuff. Uh, you want the holistic person because uh, a part of a person doesn't go to war, the whole person goes to war. And somebody's marriage is on the rocks or something else like that, you better believe that affects their performance as a member of a functioning combat ready team. So you really need to help provide mentorship that's more holistic and they should start feeling your affection for them. This really dawned on me, um, I was a team leader, a squad leader at the time, but I went out to a bar with uh, the guys. I wasn't a big drinker or anything, but it just kind of good esprit de corps, take the guys out and whatnot. And I had a bunch of privates, a bunch of subordinates with me anyway. And I remember I was talking to some military guy in a bar. <coughs> And I guess that uh, my guys that were there with me, just kind of watching me interact with this other sergeant or, or, or whatever he was, he was from some different unit, uh, but they were watching and they just didn't like the body language of the other guy. And so as I'm talking to him, this is so cool, as I'm talking to him, they start just kind of pushing a little bit in front of me and they're like staring him down. And I'm kind of engaged in conversation, so I don't realize what's happening at first until I'm kind of like boxed out of my own conversation here. I'm like, dude, dude guys, what are you doing here? And I realized that they were protecting me. <laughs> and I thought that was awesome. I could kill them all, so I don't know why they were protecting. No, I'm, t uh, well, I'm teasing, but I'm not really teasing. Uh, but anyway, they, they, they were protecting me. I realized that my guys that I'd put through hell, uh, you know, had a, had a certain amount of affection for me. And they knew I cared about them too. And that's kind of like, uh, you don't talk about that in the military. Are you, are you kidding me? Uh, but um, it, it's absolutely true. Uh, fear and anger can be good motivators. Love is going to be the best one. And really, it's a band of brothers 
uh, that ends up taking you home. And that's what that's what arrives us to the next thing. After you've gone through the break them down phase, you've gone through the rebuilding phase, now they're competent soldiers who are really in the area of, uh, they've been through all of that, they're trained, they're good to go. Now you need to welcome them into a brotherhood. They're an initiated brother now, uh, which means now it's mutual respect. I mean, to, to smoke, uh, a, you know, for a squad leader to smoke a fire team leader would be wildly inappropriate to treat them like a private or something else uh, like that. They're not motivated. They've done that. And to do that would be uh, very, very disrespectful and, and kind of a breach of brotherhood. Uh, even there's other ways that you start dealing with it now. Uh, yeah, at this point, the initiated brother, we're all on first names and we're anticipating each other's actions. Of my big goal, and I know that somebody's getting close to being initiated brother and, and moving out of the uh, rebuild phase. When they no longer wait for me to command them to do anything, they're anticipating my commands. They're trying to guess what I might ask them to do next and beat me to the punch so I never do it. And when we're like room clearing or doing something else like this, this is where it starts feeling like this beautiful choreographed dance where you're just flowing silently. You know where everyone's moving and going and it, being part of that, uh, being part of a team like that is really something that's humbling and pretty special. I still, out of all the things that I miss from the military, that's probably one of the most is being a part of a well-oiled machine where we're all anticipating and queuing off of uh, each other. Everyone should be cross-trained and at this point initiated brothers uh, when bullets fly and you forget about GI Bill and patriotism you're fighting for the guy next to you uh, and having that love uh, that you would die for the guy beside you that's the ultimate goal in leadership. So I wanted to craft a more holistic picture of some of the lessons I learned in military leadership because I didn't really have an end goal. And because I didn't have an end goal, a picture of what I was actually building soldiers for, I didn't really have a good progression. I had to figure it out. And I think back on how much time I wasted when I was just kind of reacting and doing what guys had done to me before. Uh, so hope this helps. Guys, if you know somebody in the military or serving in any law enforcement unit or sports team or anything else like that, share this with them. It may help. Uh, as always, it's not good enough just to train hard, train smart. See you next time, Warrior Poets.